This is just a quick video to talk about how to use the selection tools, perhaps cutting and pasting a small part of the object, and really kind of turning this into a bunch of layers in order to make it very easy for you to kind of impact some middle layers. There's tons of videos out there on this. This is just a quick overview of how I might do this. I want to get rid of this person here, and I want to get rid of this person here. They don't even really look like they belong in the picture. They almost look like they were part of a photo bomb or something like that. So to do this, I'm going to take the background and I'm going to duplicate it by dragging it down onto the new layer icon. I'm going to go ahead and access a mask that I'd already started. Flash the Q button to see what's going on. I went ahead and cut this person out, but I really didn't need to worry about these people any lower than about here. As a matter of fact, just so that you can see what that's like, I'm going to go ahead and delete a huge portion of this selection. It really doesn't matter how ragged. I'll go ahead and do this to it. This is down here. All I needed to do was make a good selection around her face, this person's face, this person's face, this one, and a little bit of their shoulders. So now that I see where I'm at, I'm going to just hit the Q button. I need to go ahead and put those on another layer. So one thing I could do is I could just go up to Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste to put them on a layer all by themselves. Or I could have, when that selection was going on, I could have clicked that I wanted to go through the refine edges box. And then I want at the bottom during the output, I could have told it make a new layer with the layer mask. I'll just do it this way for this one. So now that I've got those people on top, I'm going to attack this middle background layer and I'm just gonna absolutely butcher it. I do not care what it looks like. I still have the pristine original down here. And these are the people that are basically doing the protecting on this. So I'm going to go up. I could try to go up in here and get the clone tool. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate the background copy one more time. So for this top background copy, I could come in here. I'm going to make the brush a little bit larger. I'm going to look for some type of feature. It's moving up and down. So I'll look at this kind of harsh line here where the shadow is being added on the column. I'll option click here. I'll try to move straight down and the brush is giving me some indication where it's at. By the preview it's throwing off, when I can see that it's kind of in line with the vertical part of the column above, I can push and hold and I can just start to drag down and it'll sample to go ahead and get rid of them. Because my brush is reasonably small, which I probably need to do because of the depth of the columns, I'm gonna have to attack getting rid of her in a series of small kind of patches. I could do the same thing to this guy over here. Look for some area like this one. Move straight down in a line, push and hold, and start to move him back and forth to go ahead and get rid of his head. And again, this guy and this guy are being protected on the layer above with a cutout. So that's one way I could do that. At some point, if I have to option click, option click, option click, five, six, seven times. The more times I'm in there with the cloning tool, the more likely it is that I'm gonna wobble and not be able to reclone this down in a straight line. And therefore it's gonna start to look maybe something like this accidentally. I'm also gonna run the chance of possibly smearing something. So I'm gonna hide that one and I'm gonna come back on this particular layer. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just throw the cloning one away. I'm gonna come up in here and I'm gonna go get the rectangle marquee tool. And I'm going to go ahead and sample for this guy be a part of the color about this big. And I'm going to simply go up to Edit Copy. And then I'm going to go up to Edit Paste to get this. I'm going to go get the Edit Transform tool, or actually the Free Transform tool. I'm going to slide this straight down by holding the Shift button down. And I'm going to use it to not only cover up his head, but then I can get away with coming in here and grabbing this and pulling it straight down. Now, if I pulled it down five or six inches, it's gonna stretch the details in this to the point that it's not gonna look realistic enough. But I could go ahead and do that to put that little patch on top of that to give me a starting point. Same kind of thing over in here. This one might actually be easier because I don't have this frame popping up. I could go get from about here to maybe about here. And I need to go make sure I'm on this layer rather than on this one because there's nothing over there. Go on to the original messed up background copy that I'm using. Edit copy, edit paste, go up to edit, pull down to free transform, slide this thing down until I'm starting to get rid of the top of her head. 
And then I could simply go in and grab this and pull it down as well to fill that. And I don't feel bad about that much of a stretch. That's probably never gonna show. When I'm done, I do have a tiny streak right here. And let's assume that I'd fix this over here and I have a kind of a few places where the patch, I can see where it's starting. Well, once again, I would just go ahead and hide this original background layer. I could hide the top layer that I'm using as the mask. And I could take these three layers. This is the background copy that I'm messing up. This is the patch from this guy. This is the patch from the woman over on the other side. And with only those three showing, I could go to the top of the layer palette and pull down and let go on merge visible. Re-put the mask back on top. And then I could come back in here and I could use, since that all three of those layers are now fused together, it'll make it much easier for me to come back in here and do any small amount of cloning I need to to repair any of those seams where the patch was coming in. And then at that point when I'm done, I could again either just leave the image as is, where these people are still doing the protecting. This kind of original copy of the background layer is all messed up with my patches, but it's never going to be shown on itself. I could, with just those two viewing, I could tell it to merge visible, and that way I would have fused all of my repairs on a one layer and still have my original background if I ever needed it. Or I could just leave them like this, because Photoshop is going to export out what I'm seeing right here once I'm done with that repair. Again, make sure I save this as an Adobe Photoshop file. That's it.